I told myself, you're going to sit your ass down and you're going to finish this course. Facts. So I sat down and I, only, I finished it in a day. And then like the day after I said, okay, bet. I'm going to drive and I'm going to go look for spaces. Like, cause I got to make this money do something. Right. Like exactly. it, 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 I don't have anything else. What's going on, you guys? It's your boy Char Slay here, and today we have an amazing guest. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Digital Empire Podcast, where we talk about helping investors and entrepreneurs take themselves to the next level. So, like I said, you guys, we have an amazing guest. She has made so much money in this world. Over, I believe, what, a quarter million now is what we're making right now? Like, that's, that's what it is just like some just a little some just some, some light. only nothing, a quarter you see what i'm saying nothing well we definitely bring in tanisha let into the into the table what's going on how Hello, you feeling Marcus. i feel amazing happy to be here i love it i love it you on the first podcast first one right top flight security okay i mean because you know first class listen <laughs> listen the first one you had to go with the best you always got to go with the best okay Ain't nothing wrong with it you see what i'm saying that's why i'm here like look we got Look, y'all don't even know we got a whole lot of partnerships flying this way too. It's a lot of money coming. Mm, I like money. I can, let's money. talk about money for Love a moment. Love money. But before we even get to but let's before we even get to money, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into the space that you're at right now. I want you to tell what you're doing right now. How you killing the game with that? Um, how did I become an entrepreneur? Exactly. Okay, this started. Really, honestly, it started when I was a kid because my dad, I watched him work, you know, at Waffle House and work his way up from a cook all the way up to district manager and then like owning a couple of them things. Mm. And then from there, he took the leap to owning his own cleaning company. My dad had vending machines. He did prepaid legal. He did construction. Prepaid legal. Yes. Throwback. (laughs) Right. A Throwback. (laughs) As a throwback. Listen, it's a forever. big time throwback, taking you back to the what? 90s and 2000s. Yeah. What? Shout out to Dwayne, Pastor Lett. Um, Yes, he's oh a pastor. Oh, my God. Too. So I grew up watching entrepreneurship. So I guess it's always been in my blood. And two, I can never keep a job. Hey, fam, it's Char Slay here. Hopefully, you guys are getting a lot of knowledge. And if you guys are getting value, make sure you click the like, comment, and subscribe button. And definitely hit the bell to get notified because I want to make sure I drop exclusive updates every single day and if you guys have any questions definitely put them in the comments below and hashtag hey slayer and i most definitely get to them when i can if you want to join my exclusive community where you get updates before anybody else does quotes and etc definitely text the word socials to 201-490-3822 family i want to see you win peace out oh so i just Something about authority and people mm. telling you what to do just never set well with me. Mm-hmm. So it started really, I had an, a couple of ideas. It started when I was pregnant with my youngest son, probably like 2017-ish. Mm. So no, no, let's, let's really touch on this. Not only are you an entrepreneur, but you're also a mother. That is correct. Two boys, 13 and 3. Shout out to Jamari and Leela. Okay, so... So let's really tap into this before we even get to the entrepreneurship, right? Let's talk about the motherly role. Okay. How, how, how does it, how do you balance being an entrepreneur and a mother at the same time? Shoot. That's crazy. Honestly, it's hard. Like doing everything by yourself, but I have a village Mm -hmm. and I know it takes a village. I mean, like my my youngest son's uh dad and his family are amazing. They've helped out a lot when it came to the baby because there was so much stuff going on like trying to run a business, trying to, you know, pay bills and things and postpartum depression and you know, right, it's just right, a lot right. of stuff that, you know, if I didn't have that mm-hmm. village, then I don't I'm not going to say I don't think I would have done it. I, it wouldn't have been able to be done in the amount of time right it would have just took me longer Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so a village is important because it definitely takes a village to raise just one individual right Mm -hmm. so you but you have two two 
So you're saying that you have multiple people that's in your life assisting you and making sure that you have that well balanced factor right. within entrepreneurship. So now with entrepreneur, what do you do in entrepreneurship right now? So I originally started with technology. Um, I have a repair shop, so I fix electronics like your phones, uh. tablets, um, computers, desktops, the works. That's where I got my first taste of entrepreneurship mm. so you were out here in these streets saying look i got I the was, little, the I, little listen, screwdrivers I was or whatever out, absolutely i was hopping out the car because i did it I for my car days. first i jumped out the car you know what i'm saying you give mm -hmm. me your stuff and i was fixing it in the car hanging your joint back that was what i did really up until when covid hit they shut all that down because i mm. can't drive i can't be out so it was a little semi-panic you know what i'm saying mm. there was a whole lot of extra stuff that was going on too in my world that was just causing a complete upheaval. But then I got into event spaces, mm -hmm. event spaces and vending. And like, so I've had vending machines, but again, because of COVID that wasn't pulling any money either. Mm. So I was stuck. So how is it that event spaces was pulling in revenue when people, where was it pulling in revenue when COVID was hitting? Absolutely. So how is that? Like, how is it pulling in revenue when people are at home? So there's different streams. So when people think event spaces, let me just say this. They think parties. You think baby showers. You're going to mm -hmm. think, you know, I don't know. Even any, weddings. Right. Wedding even parties. weddings. But mm -hmm. we know all of that stuff was shut down. But there's right. so many other different things that a, an open space, an event space you can do. So there's classes. There's mm. COVID testing facilities. There's... Um, meetings, seminars, um, you can host your own type of events. There's there's so many other things like the the list goes on. So it's not just parties. I mean, we definitely do the parties, the weddings, the baby showers, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, the quinceaneras, sweet sixteens, all that too. <laughs> Listen, we get it in over there at Let's Party. Well, but week. So it's called Let's Party. Let's Party. Two T's because it's me. L E T T S. Okay. All right. So it, I'm just letting y'all know if y'all want to get an event space, y'all know who to go to. Hello. It's all me. All right. So let's go let's go through this. So you said that so how was it in during during the COVID time? Like you said that there was like how was how would somebody approach you if they want to get into event space? Uh, that's a hard question because I've already had so many people approach me about it. I just, I mean, you could just honestly straight up ask, <laughs> and then I'll tell you what I'll charge you, which is probably going to be a minimum of like maybe five k. Mm -hmm. But everything's for the most part is going to be done for you. Um, which is really the avenue that I'm moving into. It's really just a dumb for you and your contract set up, your back mm -hmm. office. Because truth be told, yeah, you can get the building, but it's a lot of stuff on the back office that right. you got to make sure is taken care of. So if I were, if I was a person and I wanted to get into event spaces because it's an investment, right? At the end mm -hmm. of the day, um, on my podcast, we talk about everything digital investment, right? Mm -hmm. Even though that's a more of a brick and mortar you still have an online presence right. that you have to sustain, that right. you have to build off of like marketing and, and et cetera. So Absolutely. if a person is wanting to book an event from you mm -hmm. or event f from you, yeah, for you, or however you want to call it. Using the space, right? Right, using the space, utilizing the space. I got you, great. Right, how does someone approach you in regards to that? Well, now you don't approach me. Um, mm. We have a website. So all of my stuff is automatic now. I have a team. I have a back office. So you wouldn't, I, even my friends, family, you know, go to the website and book. Right. But I'm very, <clears throat> I treat my business like a business. Like it's mm. not, a, I don't treat any of my businesses like a hobby. It's a business. So <clears throat> like somebody that's kin of somebody at Walmart, you can't just roll up and be like, hey, get this for me. No, it's a it's a system and it's a process that you got to go through. Right. So I still send people to the website. They fill out their contact form. They get in touch with our booking team. Um, and then we set that up for them. Mm. And then we go from there. Okay. So I know you mentioned your family when it came to your event-based business. Mm -hmm. How did your family feel when it came to you becoming an entrepreneur? Right. Because a lot of people don't have that form of support. Right. But a lot of people do. Like in my, on my side, my mom is an entrepreneur. She mm. was born. My family, my dad was an entrepreneur. But how does how did that work on your side? How did Was there a support system? Absolutely not. Mm. No, it's even though my dad's an entrepreneur, he's also a pastor. So his focus is the church. And my dad lives in the Philippines. Right. So it's not like I had that 
ability to reach out and touch him and ask him. Now, did I get his opinion? Absolutely, I did. Did he tell me it was a good idea during a pandemic? <laughs> no, it was insane, which a lot of people told me that was insane. And right. Why would you open an event space in the middle of a pandemic? Which was a blessing. Well, $250,000 later. Right, mm, exactly. One year later, here we 100%. are. 100%. So I didn't have that support. It was a lot of learning Mm. On my own that I had to do. A lot of bumping my head on my own that I had mm. to do and figure out. Now, another, you know, shout out to my business besties. Like, they are phenomenal. We bounce a lot of stuff off of each other. We give each other a lot of feedback. We uplift mm. one another. So that was also really, you know, I had to find my own community. Right. And then that's where I get my support from, my mm. own community. Okay. So speaking of a community, right? You're a part of one. I am. And I hear that you're out here in these streets. Listen, the really baddest community <laughs> in the land. You feel me? So tell me about that. How's that? What is that? What do you What do you do in this community? So, let first of all, shout out to my mentor. Mm. Life changing. Okay, let's let's name what's what's the listen, mentor's name, Mister Nehemiah Davis mm, himself. Right. Listen. The GOAT? The GOAT. Okay. The event space GOAT. The digital marketing all around entrepreneurial GOAT. Yep. 100%. <clears throat> so the community, that's the community that I was talking about. It is amazing. Mm. It is life changing, life shattering, altering. There is shattering. Like no that. community that I have been a part of since being an entrepreneur that has been like this one. So you think a community is important in regards to being extremely an important. Mm. I have cried on some of these people's shoulders. These people <laughs> right. know my deepest, darkest secrets. They know my ups, my downs, financial. Str- I mean, everything. Right, right, right. So that's crazy because you know, as a person who's in Nehemiah's mentorship, you know what I mean. It's community is everything. Absolutely. So the fact that you're in he has different communities that are obviously similar you're in the event space i'm in his inner circle Mm -hmm. right you're still technically in the inner circle you still get the sauce right so you get you probably get the sauce before we do (laughs) it ain't even like that i don't i don't get the sauce i just i love being in the environment i love being in the room i don't care what it costs i don't care where i gotta do right where i gotta go who i gotta get through i know if there's something on the other side as far as information that i need i'm gonna get it that's just mm. I, I'm gonna do everything that I can to get to where I need to be and accomplish my goals. So, do you believe a mentor should be a part of that process? Absolutely, hundred percent. I from when I was an entrepreneur on my own, which when did I take? So I took a because this isn't the first class or anything that I've paid to kind of get a fast pass, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> there was nothing ongoing. Like I learned a uh, repair from. My first mentor, um, Nicole, she has she she taught me repair. Nicole didn't which Nicole? Um, she owns Cellbotics. That's the name of her school. I feel like that name sounds familiar. Probably you've seen her. She's I've probably huge. seen her on Instagram or something she like that. She is huge in the technology world. Mm. And then being a woman is something that I resonate with as well. Nice. So she taught me a lot of stuff as far as like business and everything to do with electronic repair. Mm-hmm. 100% everything. I, I learned a little bit from the Army, but I learned majority of that from her. But right, the right, only right. thing is like after... And I know that was still, it wasn't the beginning stages, but for me, I didn't know how to actually reach out and say, hey, can you help me? You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So it was, you know, after I left class and left under her tutelage, then, you know, I went on about my, you know, I went on it on my own. Right. And so being an entrepreneur on your own is cool. It's amazing to say, you know, I did it 100% by myself, pull myself right, up. Self-made, by, you right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, that's, that's cool. But you know, having the knowledge that I have now I would go back, tell myself, stay under her right. as much as you can. Hell, if you got to move to the same city as them, move. Right. Um, having a mentor has changed my life, 100%. So I wouldn't have the knowledge. I wouldn't have the access. I wouldn't know the people that I know mm-hmm. without having a mentor. So, and I'm glad you said that because your dad was somewhat of a mentor, right? Absolutely. When it came to like your vending machines, because you said you have vending machines. Mm-hmm. So how is that vending machines business going right now? 
after COVID, vending machine business is going amazing. So it's popping right now. It's popping. Oh, vending machines are truly popping. So, and okay. I don't, I have like maybe one combo machine that I have to check once every two weeks, mm. but the other one's just gumballs. Like okay, it's just so the candy machines. How many you got? How many locations you got? How many accounts you got with It's 45 them? machines total. God. <laughs> yeah. So it's like Damn. a route. So I have to take like what, one day, maybe a Saturday and a Sunday. Out of every Sheesh. month and just hit every route. But you got to remember, it's just gumballs. Okay. Gumballs, so m &Ms. How does a person get into vending machines, gumball machines? Like, tell, 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 tell look, on this podcast, we give okay. the sauce. So, okay. This is my thing. <laughs> I know a lot of people, they're like, you know, I'm going to go buy a machine first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wrong. I think that's wrong. I think for me, this is my opinion. Right. I think that's dumb. Why would you buy a machine and you don't have a place to put it? Right. Now it's just sitting. Now you wasted money. Exactly. What you can do, and I, I peep a lot of places that I go, mm -hmm. and I like to really target mom and pop shops because mm -hmm. big corporations, is too much you got to go through. Okay, so what is classified as a mom and pop shop? I would say something with 100 employees or less. Mm. Mom and pop shop. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So we scout the place first. Absolutely. Listen, I'm a professional locator. Okay, so so break it down for me. After we okay, spot so the location, what we do? Perfect example. I went to go get my car fixed. And truth be told, I'm pretty sure y'all probably done ran across a couple locations. You'd be like, dang, I'm hungry. I've been sitting here for hours. Hello? Only the thing about being an entrepreneur all we do is solve a problem. Exactly. We are professional problem solvers, but mm -hmm. we're doing it on our own. Right. If you're in any form of management, you're a professional problem solver. So, mm. but, okay, back to the vending machine. Sorry, because I can go off on a tangent. Okay, no, no, no. Let's, let's break it down. Like, we, we got the location. Okay. We, we, we scouting. So, how to scout. Okay. You can cold call. You can drive. Mm -hmm. um, I do a little bit of both, depending on how I feel that day. Mm -hmm. Um. Or it's just you notice it. So, perfect example. I went to go get my car fixed, which I had to get like an oil change, had like right. flux capacitor, proximeter sensor. I don't know. It's Whatever. Too many. Right. It was a whole lot of stuff. Um, but I was sitting there and he was like, it's going to be about two hours. And then I noticed like he had like candies and chocolates sitting out on the on the table or whatever. And so I went to use the restroom and I was looking around in the shop and I'm like, Oh, he ain't got no vending machine in here. Oh, so we Because I here. look, and I'm like, I'm okay. getting a little thirsty now. It was a Mexican restaurant, like, right next door. But I was like, I don't feel like walking over there. Like, plus, I'm, I had my laptop out. I'm working. I'm like, dang, I killed for some chips right now. I can't get chips from the Mexican spot, right? Um. So I'm like, let me ask this man about a vending machine. Mm. So, because, you know, like, I am ain't going to tell you, you know what I'm saying, right, like, what, right, what I'm right. thinking in my game plan. I asked him. I was like. Do you have any? And I asked him, I was like, you have like a bottle of water or like some chips or anything like that? He was like, no, nah, all I got is these candies. And it was like some, you know, old people candies, like the ones that be in the pocket with the hair on it. You take oh, it out of the pocket. Nasty. Yeah, the little lint hair. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's gross. But whatever. We're not going to eat that. Mm -mm. So Y'all don't get none of that. Listen, yeah. don't eat that candy. Don't like, the, the, you know, the one that be in the bottom of grandma's purse. And she be like, here, baby, I got some candy. And it got like hairs on it. Oh. Like cat hair, dog hair or whatever mm -hmm. on it. You ain't never seen the order candies that you one no, no, of the kids that licked I'm just off like, of nah, I'm not going for and it. And put it back in the wrapper, and they be trying put to give it. Back. Oh my god! <laughs> put it so, back in the wrapper. Yeah, you ain't never like licked. Listen, let me tell you. So, I'm gone before that even happens. Let me tell you, being a pastor, a PK, and we sitting in church all day now. I got to save my snacks. My sisters, my <laughs> oldest sister, and my baby sister, they knew how to conserve snacks. Okay. Okay. I'm, so how are they conserving? I'm a fat kid at heart. I don't know how to conserve snacks. But I learned, like, with peppermints and, like, candies. So, like, Jolly Ranchers. I would take Jolly Ranchers, right? i put them in my mouth. Suck on them for, like, five, ten minutes. Okay? Because we got... Listen, it's Revival Day. We finna be here from 8 a.m. to midnight. Yo. You feel me? So, I would take my Jolly Rancher. This is my last one. So, I put it back in the wrapper, right? Wrap it up. All right. Put it back in my little fake church purse, right? And I was the like, tight ones with the little absolutely bruh. <laughs> listen absolutely and that's the only reason so i wised up to why my sister started carrying purses okay, okay. so they carrying purses to hide snacks hey fam it's char slay here hopefully you guys are getting a lot of knowledge and if you guys are getting value make sure you click the like comment and subscribe button and definitely hit the bell to get notified because i want to make sure i drop exclusive updates every single day and if you guys have any questions definitely put them in the comments below and hashtag hey slayer and i most definitely get to them when i can if you want to join my exclusive community where you get updates before anybody else does quotes and etc definitely text the word socials to 201-490-3822 family i want to see you win peace out
Because we're tired. Listen, my So this was- is what he had. No. Yes, he had like dirt. Like yes, it was dirty candy. Mm-mm. Like like dirty candy. Did and you, I'm like, did no, you eat it? no, you, no. You do I look like it. I ate it? <laughs> do I do I look like I would eat used candy? I'm just absolutely absolutely not. No. So I asked old buddy. I was like, okay, so have you ever thought about putting a vending machine in here? And he was like, well, yeah, I I have, but you know, it's just not something. I looked into the cost of them, but it's just not something that you know I can afford. So I was like, oh, I was like, well, do you mind? I I told him, I was like, well, I do offer vending services to small business owners. You know, I put Mm -hmm. on my professional voice and whatnot. Vending services. Listen, even though I had my finest, my finest fashion over fit. (laughs) So I still had to be like professional or whatever. Right. Right. So I told him, I was like, well, I do offer um, vending services for free because I tell Mm -hmm. them for free to Mm -hmm. small business owners. He was like, so what does that look like? And so I told him, I was like, well, basically, you know, my team and I will bring in the machine. We'll fill it up. You don't have to do any of the maintenance, any of the work. And that's it. And I was like, and basically it'll supply to, you know, your team in the back, you and your clients that come in. So that way they don't Mm -hmm. have to go across the street to Walmart. Mm -hmm. They don't have to go next door to the Mexican spot. They have chips, drinks and all that. And he was like, yeah, well, it sounds like a, a good thing. And I also told him, like, so I do coffee services, too. So coffee's whoa whoa, whoa that's whoa, that's a part whoa, of vending whoa, absolutely whoa. okay okay yes. okay you're teaching me something new here oh you didn't know okay okay hold up you didn't know what is the different types of vending in your like break it down for me like you said coffee services how does that look how how does that work so dang I left my laptop over here I really could have pulled up the contracts and everything and show you but we can do that after yeah we, we can talk about that so i want to get into it i have I'm, contracts i'm will in place and everything okay one before we even get yeah. how much does it cost to get into this to this game once you find your location you can find you a good it depends on the type of machine that you want okay you want to do the your machines gumball routes child you can find you a good gumball machine for about a hundred dollars 125 what? so so Probably so less than you're, that, you're honestly. telling you're telling them yeah. that they could start right now hundred dollars for a gumball machine yeah if you scout your location yes absolutely absolutely yes. A- absolutely yes. after they get through the location how much does it cost to actually fill up the gum machine girl you can go to sam's get you the big box variety box how much of those they like seven eight bucks but you know when you gotta you know yeah, in right. atlanta you the, yeah, yeah, we got a plug yeah, we got a little food facts, stamp plug you facts. know what i'm saying you know instacart saying? don't even care about it now now you can instacart stuff from sam's club and, and all that can you pay with food stamps Oh no, we can't do okay, that. Okay, listen, because oh, oh, I got a plug. Oh, okay, we got a plug. Oh, okay. We definitely getting that plug for look, flowing. Got a plug, I want like saying? forty vending machines. It's and it's passive, like gumball machine. It's easy. Gumbo, it's really passive. I want, I want it really. I want passive income. And that's a hundred percent, like truly passive. If it's something that you know you're like the you soda machines extra, and yeah, the snacks no, are the ones I that's mean, like. I would say the combo machines, like your soda and snack machines, is if it's in a great location, you're gonna be that joint at least. At least once, if not once a week, every two weeks. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the passive is like monthly, three Absolutely. weeks in. Yeah. Okay. Your candy machine. So, because okay. you got to think, as a kid, we used to love the gumball machines, the little toy machines, the little, what, you can get your Skittles, your peanut M&Ms. Like, it's, it's vending. You got, man, look, they have vending machines that sell weave. Okay, they sell sanitizing supplies. Wait, 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 chill. I yeah. swear, eyelashes. <laughs> you know, you ever been to the airport and the yeah. little Best Buy has vending machines that sell electronics. That's vending. Oh. See, but people are just thinking like candy and gum. You can do so much oh. with a vending machine. Oh, you're, you're, mm-hmm. it's, it, the light bulb is flicking. It's Everything. flickering. Right? It's, 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 it's turning. You can put anything in a vending machine. Okay. And okay. if you go to like these other countries, like, Japan mm-hmm. and you know China. You look at their vending. They, their some of their vending machines dispense whole fruit. Some of them are cutter. Like I seen the other day on TikTok because I follow vending TikTok because I, I like to. You, you heard know. of this app called Vending Biz? Yes. So I was just watching, you know, Social Proof podcast. Right. You know how it goes. We gotta, we gotta. We, right. You already know. So I haven't downloaded the app. Actually, I'm gonna download it. You know, today. Mm-hmm. That was the plan. So I'm hearing you can actually buy routes. Um, you don't need the vending biz to buy routes. Like once you locked in the community, I have like three or four people that I consistently bought routes from. There's a guy right now that's selling a route. It's like nine thousand dollars, and it's like six machines, but it's like in South Carolina. Which type? What type of machines? <clears throat> Different machines. So it's so like it's the actual ranges. yeah ranges. Food machines. There's a route right now for sale in like Macon. 
I think the dude wants like, I think it was like seventy thousand for it. How many? But machines? it was on. It was a lot of machines, and it was in like a, a look, huge. Look, I'm not company. trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to buy routes. Trying to buy machines. I mean, that's one way to... you can go if you want to go about it once. I've done it all the way. So I bought routes. I bought machines. Scouted locations. Basically, you know, had stuff given. And like sometimes a lot of these people that they just want to offload them. They just want to get rid of them. Exactly. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. So, so. So we're let's let's get let's get back okay. to the juicy part. All right, okay. all right, all right. Because this is interesting, actually. Okay. All right. So, coffee vending machines. It's and not coffee vending machines. Okay, so it's it? considered vending. Like I would come in and set up your coffee stuff. Like you know your creamers. Your mm -hmm. this is this is just me thinking out of the box. This is for me now. I don't know if everybody else is doing it, but I know it was for me. Like I I have left a Keurig there, and I just stock it. I tell them I leave the Keurig here for you and your people because you didn't have a Keurig. I leave uh, the Keurig here for you and your people and mm -hmm. keep it stocked with coffee. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Coffee creamer, and then I get like a percentage or whatever from that. Okay, so let's talk about <clears throat> percentages. How do they get paid? How they do don't. you get paid? So you you don't. There's nothing. There's just like this. I just want to set I this don't, here. I none of my routes. I have to pay commission. None of my mm. routes. I know there are some people that offer people commission. I, I'm, this no, is all your bread. Yeah, I'm doing all the work. What do you have to do? But just eat the food. But again, that's just me. But mm. some people will tell you, yeah, you can offer, but you don't ever go in offering to give somebody some money. Okay, all right. Why would you do such a thing? All right, that's right, crazy. right, right. So, so, so. Because when they, this is this is it. the, when I get that pushback, they're like, okay, well, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. That's when I hit them with, well, you don't have to do anything. My team and I will come in, we'll keep it stock. We'll keep whatever your favorites are, the things that you're looking for. You have to do zero work, zero maintenance. It helps boost morale with your employees. It helps boost morale with your clientele, which it it <clears throat> makes the wait not feel as long. So then in turn, it's gonna give you good reviews. It's building better rapport for your employees as well as your clients. All right, so how does a person go into like what does the contracts look like when it comes to vending machines like help help brother out here so again my contracts and again everybody's gonna be different but mm -hmm. don't move my sh <laughs> okay wherever i put my machine wherever i put my stuff when i come back it better be here <clears throat> so they and don't ever touch it uh yes i have had a, a company I, I have had a company where they'll move my, sh my out the way and put it like in the back or no that's not what we agreed oh, on. Wow. Yeah, so those are just things that you agree on, but proposals, signing, so we understand. Mm -hmm. um, because they will move your machine. They absolutely, positively will. Why? Um, probably because it, it could be in the way. It's an eyesore. I don't know. A couple of... One, they was just trying to tell me it was in a way. And it wasn't. Girl, it is by itself, minding its own business. But mm. um, I also, like, non-competes. Mm-hmm. Non competes. Facts. So absolutely put in a non compete clause because can't nobody else come up in here and join my. Sh Thank you. I'm gonna need that contract. A par uh, parentheses s a parentheses close. Okay. okay? I'm I gonna hear need, you. I'm gonna need that. Actually, would be better. I would like to be a silent partner in vending machines. And see, you can, but I don't need a silent partner for mine. I just want a partner. Okay, you have a partner. But you could literally do it yourself. Okay, teach me how to do it. Oh, you want me to teach you? Now? I want. I want the whole shebang. This could be off. And off you know, here. I've never. I ain't never taught vending machines. It's just. But I again, I grew up with it, so I know that's probably why it's something. It's probably instinctive. Yo, and it's crazy. I used to hate it as a kid. For real? Man, hell yeah! My daddy used to have a me, not us. It was me, <laughs> not my other siblings. My daddy made me do a whole lot of stuff. That when I sit back and think about it, my excuse me, my daddy had me cutting grass, weeding, filling up vending machines, cleaning with his cleaning company. And then I look back, I'm doing literally everything. Cleaning with my dad. company. Yes, my dad owned a commercial cleaning business as well, just like I do. I'm really following in my father's footsteps. That is scary. Wait, so how many businesses do you have? I have the vending machine, the event space, the repair company, the cleaning business, um, the podcast, and okay. the trucking company, and then, which is coming really this year, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the trucking company, and then the property management company. So I'm actually going to go to school to do like residential construction, because mm -hmm. I want to learn. It, that is actually a, a important mm -hmm. thing to learn. Yeah. Especially if it's in real estate or 
And that's what I'm getting and actually next. anything. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. you have and 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 I like I said, I get personal. Okay. That's fine. What what is this what does the cash flow look like monthly for the businesses that are up right now? She at least like thirty K. Thirty K total or each? No, thirty K total. And the reason it's thirty K total is because the click oh, I forgot about the rentals. So the event rentals as well. But it's oh, yeah. because last year, you know, I was really learning like mm -hmm. building foundations and learning mm -hmm. majority of it last year came from vending and event spaces mm -hmm. <clears throat> so i was learning then i made my mistakes i hit my head now i know what to do so this right. year no oh, this, this is dumb okay so we're making 30k gross what does expenses look like total i'm cheap so <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm cheap. I'm cheap as hell. No, so, ain't nothing. Look, ain't nothing wrong with being cheap and expensive. I like to keep my expenses minimum. So I pay what is it? Maybe about if you don't include gas, because that comes off the gas cards. Right. Good old business credit. Facts. Um roughly about six K. Oh, so oh, so we're we're really eating. Off t what twenty four thousand? Absolutely, and then oh, wow. outside of like my personal bills, but like business expenses, right? Yeah, roughly about six k. So we're we're really, so we got whatever we want to do type money, lifestyle money. Well, we don't have whatever we want to do well, type but, money. But I, I mean, we what well, you're right. We do have you do have kids. Mm -hmm. You do have a, you know a whole family involved. So there is a lot of those expenses, mm -hmm. and they say kids are what ten times more expensive than us. I'm I don't cheap. know. My kids are cheap. They're I not. They're not. My kids love cra juicy crab child. They eat crab, juicy crab, crab is good. No, no, no. Let me tell you something about juicy crab. That thing is. Listen, juicy that, crab slaps. That, that juicy juicy crab, crab. Whatever that sauce is, yo. Yeah, I can make the sauce. I know you can cook, so I know you can make the sauce. I can. If I got the ingredients, I can definitely make the sauce. So let me tell you something. For juicy sure, crab so. got me in a a chokehold. Never what? let it go. Juicy crab got me in a, a serious chokehold. What, what what juicy crab do to you? Listen, I can eat juicy crab every day. Seafood in Mexican, I can't that's my eat joint. Juicy crab every day. You're crazy. That literally, my stomach Listen, cannot do it. Like, I can eat juicy crab and Mexican food every Mexican single food is day. Smacking, but I can't. I can't eat. I can't eat juicy crab or Mexican food every day. I, I can eat seafood every day, but just not. I, it's the sauce for juicy crab for me. Love it. It, I love it. Burn my, my stomach. Listen, don't, burn though. the roof of my mouth. Burn my stomach line. I don't want my. I don't want it burning. Though. Burn it. It's good going down. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> burn my stomach. <laughs> listen, burn, I was about to say something else, but I was. I'm just gonna let you know that right. I already know. Okay. Okay. So we was losing. Okay. That's why I gave you the so look. So we were in the same place. Oh, okay. I was. You gotta listen. say. You gotta say. Pause after that. Excuse me. Church finger. Excuse me. Yes, the church finger got to go up on that one. Right. It's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the past the children that be out here in these streets, okay? I'm not even going to lie to you. I am a good PK, though. Oh. I'm not one of them. Oh. I'm one of the other ones. So okay, I'm all right. Look, I'm just, I'm just I saying. I am, listen, save, sanctified, okay. with the Holy Ghost. I might cuss a little bit. You know, but ain't but, nothing wrong uh, look, look, ain't nothing wrong with it. Fornication, I would never, girl. This podcast is explicit, so... <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Fornication? That's crazy. I would never do anything like that. I'm weak. Mm -mm. All right, so let's let's get back. Let's get back into this real quick. Let's 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 really break down. Okay. What you want? We know? got five to six businesses in the works. How do you manage stress? And you're stress a mother. That's stress a whole that, different stress job. Stress out of my mind. Do you hear me? So how do you? Why do you delegate some of these businesses? Hell yeah. Okay. What what does that look like? Um. So the event space for the most part is. 98% delegation. Okay. 98 okay. it has to, in order for me to be at optimum optimus primal performance. <laughs> <laughs> you have to delegate. You got to have a team. You can only go so far by yourself. So how many people do you have under your, like people wise, team wise? Six. Six people is Six. running your event space right now. Yes. Wow. Six. Okay. So what about vending machine? That's just me. That's just you. That's just why. Me. Why not delegate that task? Because I don't want to give nobody else no money. Oh, so is that that one's eaten, eaten? I like that money. Oh, because then I have to pay somebody to drive. I don't want to. So that's forty five locations that you have to hit. Yes and no, because some some locations have more than one machine in them. 
Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 So who said you can't hit same place twice? Okay. Hello. So, <laughs> Some people need to drink and a snack okay. machine and the coffee. Okay. So, so let's, let's say this, right? Is this all in, cause we're currently in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So is this all in Georgia? Absolutely. So how far out in Georgia are we talking? Maybe like 45 minutes, like Latonia, Conyers, um stone they're all kind of like it's 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 a route so it starts at camp creek and then i kind of just work my way up like around, around 285 yep, type and i area. come on back down uh, mm-hmm. so that's a literally an all-day process yes it is with but traffic majority like i've i've mapped it out because majority of the time there are sam's near or close to everywhere i'm going um, so i don't have to i know a lot of people that's why i got that big you know what I'm saying they're big body bins outside to mm. load up the truck and right, then right, right. maneuver. So do you purposely pick locations knowing where certain like Sam's Club certain places are? No. It just it just happens. Just to, coincidence. Yeah. It's just coincidence, yeah. Okay, so so we have gumball machines, just you doing it. You yeah. doing the routes, Saturday, Sundays, you hitting those bad boys. Mm-hmm. They hitting they coming through with the revenue. What you said project management. Yeah. What does that look like? So property management. Oh, property management. Property Excuse management. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you already know I am doing a little bit of project management, but I'm weak. <laughs> just a little bit. But no, um, property management, which go it, it ties into my dad told me last year that I need to start getting into real estate. So 100%. stocks and real estate, which again that that's still new for me. Which you, um, which you know we do our thing over here. Hello. Okay. Shout out look, to social currencies. Okay, social currencies all day. It is sponsored by Social Currencies, by the way. Just want to let you know. Letting them know. Come on, shameless plug. Okay, look. We're just <laughs> going to go ahead and put that out there. Like, y'all don't even know what's going on. But no, let's continue. Let's go. Let's so, continue. he told me I needed to get into real estate and stocks. Still working on the stocks, but I'm making my way downtown to real estate. Okay? Mm. So, I decided so to... He told... My dad told me <laughs> that he took, like, a construction class or something from back in the day, back in, I don't know, 1927 wherever he was at but anywho <clears throat> no, wait 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 mm-hmm. the year whatever that was like 1910 1905 whenever how old is know. your dad he's not even that old my dad and your mom probably the same age but he's gonna hear this and be like girl don't play with me <laughs> so i was, was kind of confused for don't a moment. play with me i think my dad was born in my mom was born in 68 or my daddy was born in 60 i don't know one of the two one okay, was 68 okay. one was 69 something like that they're so, but, like but he told you to get in real estate he did he told me i needed to that should be my next venture because i'm doing everything else he said <laughs> i need to go ahead and get into real estate so i said okay let me find me a construction school put this hard hat on get this hammer you know get the banging on bitch and whatnot i mean banging on like wood and stuff but um so I found a couple of different schools, but I'm glad I, you passed through that like you just did. Go I ahead. I did. Yeah, no, let's get right on past it. <laughs> so I found this real estate school in like Gwinnett County. Um, they teach like construction because I want to learn everything. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily something I want to do, but if I got to get in there, I like to know that I can. All right, the renovations and all of that. All of my business. Everything in your business should you should know about. For I, sure. I, right, I feel like I should, and a lot of people, you know, the rich rich people, they just hire somebody and they trust them to do it. Right. I feel like I need to have a little bit of knowledge and everything that i'm putting my hands on mm-hmm. but that's that's me other people be like nah just find somebody to do it and call it a day now certain stuff right. i will just find somebody to do it and call it a day because mm-hmm. i don't feel like devoting that much energy to it heard automation versus automatic <laughs> hello so but every business that i own as of today i have knowledge on how to run it without a mm-hmm. team so but i always feel like you should know how are you going to tell somebody else how to run your business if you don't know how exactly okay so we have property management vending machine event spaces you said you had two or three more what was the other two the cleaning company the cleaning event company. rentals okay so, like so furniture rentals so do you need a team for those two if so how many do you have on those absolutely so i'm push up on game cleaning company i don't clean houses it's mainly like my contractors so i hire out mm. contractors i'm a professional middleman that's what i do mm, i feel like i was that. pulled i was put on this planet by the lord himself to be a professional middleman mm. and i am damn good at it right so i have contractors um that clean residential homes i'm trying to get i'm trying to stick my toe into commercial which i started with myspace so funny thing is MySpace. Every, <clears throat> no myspace my oh, event oh, i'm sorry oh, my oh. event space so said, we throwing back throwback okay listen <laughs> I don't even want to go back to my space. But so like with my cleaning, uh, my cleaning company, anytime I hire mm-hmm. a cleaner to clean the venue, I get some money on the back end for it. 
Okay, hold up, hold up. Hold I up, know, hold huh? Up, hold, 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 hold All of my phone. businesses tie into each other somewhere. Or another. <laughs> repeat that again. Anytime, repeat that again. Let me make sure I'm following. Every time mm -hmm. I hire a cleaner mm -hmm. to clean the venue in between events and do mm -hmm. deep cleans, mm -hmm. I get money on the back end. Okay, so so we're going by we're breaking back. We're, let's let's tie it back to what Neo said. He said, "Let's work on amateurs get paid on the front end, professionals get paid on the back end." And what am I? So you are being paid on the back end as a professional should. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? So you so you're not getting paid on the front end, or are you getting paid on the front end? No. So I get basically I have um, I use a payment processing system okay. where my con so I technically do get paid from the venue. Mm -hmm. The company pays the the company, not the mm -hmm. actual contractor. Then I get my cut. Then I pay them out. Uh, so I'm collecting the money. I'm right. giving them the job. I'm just telling them where to show up. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's cool. But I still have to hire and do all the other stuff, like do, conduct interviews, perform, sign contracts, don't poach my clients, so on and so forth. The whole nine. So how does that look when someone comes to you? How do you search for your contractors? Indeed. Mm. Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Groups, Craigslist, Let Go. I found cleaners on the side of the road. I found other cleaners cleaning other businesses. Okay. And I let them know, hey, I'll bring you consistent money, consistent people, consistent clients. And So how like, consistent? How consistent are we talking? We're doing pretty good. So are, do you clean every day, every week? How does that work? Three mm -hmm. times a week? Because, again, the, the business is, is fairly new. Okay. So my first month we pulled in like 3k the first mm -hmm. month That's um, when I first started it. <clears throat> and that was like uh net. So that was after Oh, everything. after so yeah. okay, after expenses. All right, right. that's what's up. So they're averaging about cuz you got to think like let's just say one cleaning person can probably clean three houses a day. One okay. team. Okay. Like if it's if it's a team or two, like cuz let's just I just like to assume everybody's doing deep cleanings cuz deep cleaning is going to take a grip. And sometimes it could be longer. So there right now I have about eight contractors, mm. eight different contractors that I give jobs to that I run and they're, they're really good. So some people I've gotten through word of mouth and other people that I know, um, I don't recommend hiring people that you know of. No, just because mm, I've heard that's not the first time I heard. Yeah. That. You know what I'm saying? It's like my people still see me as, you know, Tanisha from way back when. Right. They don't, they don't see a uh, big baller shot collar type. Okay. All right. All right. Period. Okay. With so, the, with the, with the, you know what I mean? And it's mine. You see the ponytail. <laughs> don't play. It's all mine. I'm things. weak. I'm weak. But yeah, so about eight contractors. Um, And you know, I'm only collecting like 20, 40 bucks. Maybe I'm not greedy. Like 20, 40 mm. bucks on the back end. But at the same time, I don't have to do nothing. So we're talking 20, 40. So that means you're getting a lot in the month. A lot of cleans in a month. So mm -hmm. how does someone contact you? Um, so we have a website. A okay. Website, like it's a whole a whole setup. It's a website. People go on, they book, and then we send out the cleaners. So okay. it's just like any other, you know, Molly made. Because truth be told, Molly made, that's all that is. So how did you learn about, is that for, still from your dad? My dad. So your dad is the GOAT. Listen, <laughs> Dwayne, and listen, like, so my dad also, him and I have been talking. He wants to start a, a credit repair company because my dad used to do credit taxes mm. and he's doing business credit as well. But he, he, this is the thing. I ain't really know how tapped in my daddy was till we actually sat down and had like real conversations and he was going over my books and stuff with me. He was like, okay, you might know what you're doing over here. Okay. Uh, duh, Dwayne, I tried to tell you. <laughs> and then when he hit me with some stuff, I was like, Okay, you might know what you're doing over right, here too. Right, right, right. You know, you know, that's how it was when I was talking with my mom and everything about the business and everything. It's just right, and so you realize y'all got a lot yeah, in common. Facts, exactly. Right, y'all have a lot in common, and then it just really now me and my daddy talk all the time, and mm. like we're investing in businesses and stuff together. I'm just, I'm, I'm shook because I was like, dang, daddy, you should have been teaching me this. I just think. If I had the drive and the mindset that I have right now as a kid, I was like, if my daddy had ingrained this stuff in me when I was a child. So how so how would you teach that to your children? It's difficult when you're younger. You don't have the same mindset now. You know, that's so hard. Because my oldest, like, let me show you his Instagram profile, first of all. You're going to trip out. <laughs> so it, Does it, he it, look 80? 
You know, these kids nowadays is Child, please don't he got facial started. hair already? He does not. My baby's still a baby. Uh, okay, just wanna make sure. So read know. that. Okay. Child actor, future millionaire, mm-hmm. soon to be business owner, and he's take taken. Well he's not. Girl, by, he ran a girl. by nobody. By nobody. Or my disabled He's taken by nobody. Nobody. But why does why is he taking? Because he got a little girl that he liked, but that oh. that doesn't matter. Girl, and don't. How old is he? He's thir- he just turned thirteen. He thirteen. He already he already take. He already no, he's not. Streets. No, he's not. Look at thirteen. Your boy was dating. Nah, me. This is no. I different don't know what you mean. Tell me what you mean. Well, you know, different generations. No. You feel what not I'm saying? My, do you, look at me. Look, look at me and who I am. Generations. What do you do? You think? <laughs> do you think? Now look at me. You knowing me, do you think? When you were 13, what were you doing? I was in the house. My dad's a pastor. What do you think? Okay. So you know the meme with uh, Squidward and he watching SpongeBob and Patrick and them outside playing? Right. Mm. I was Squidward. I'm I'm watching the kids outside. (laughs) What? Going outside? Playing? But he... My parents took me to prom. chilling, you know what I mean? Listen, Neva took me to prom. (laughs) My mama took me to prom. You think Dwayne and Neva wouldn't let us go nowhere? So, so let me... Let me make sure we on the same page. Mm-hmm. He's already in the mindset. So you're saying he's further than he's, your mindset. Absolutely. Then. Absolutely. Because so, he sees it. He's He's been seeing me and my entrepreneurial struggles, mm. you know, because that's that's my first. He didn't we didn't been through some things together. Let's talk about the struggles real quick as an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. How like what are some of the struggles that you went through as an entrepreneur opening, especially as a serial entrepreneur. Yeah. So what are some of the struggles that you've gone to? Gone Being through? Broke. Being broke. Being bro- homeless. <laughs> child. Skipping on bills. Not paying bills. Getting stuff cut off. Um, Getting a car. No, I didn't get repoed. I gave it back. Because the check engine light had came on. And I think I had been driving until like the transmission was tearing up because it was skipping. So I just told them to come get their shit. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just come get your car. Um, so done. they didn't count it as a repo. They just I don't Yo, know what is it. Is it a voluntary repo? I, don't I was even like, come know. get this raggedy shit. Cause the fact like that the, you went through that whole story so quickly. Listen, had me cause weak. Eh, it's all right. Cause like the bumper or the front bumper was hanging off the bitch. It was I miss my Jetta though. Shout out to J Dub. So wait, wait. <clears throat> so being broke, repossession. But like I'm talking, let's talk about like while you're building your business. She same, same <laughs> shit. So now it was hard. Like it was really hard trying to be a paycheck prostitute. Shout out to the the nine to five workers. No, you know, paycheck no prostitute. That's no the shade. goat. You should probably trademark that. I wasn't for me though. I wasn't the one that said it. I just loved it when I heard it, and I was like, "I want to take that. I like that." If you that. better, you better. Uh, but it's not mine, though. Oh, so, so somebody already mine. owns it? No, nobody owns it. But they just said it. <clears throat> yeah, if somebody, say, I can say the someone can prostitute the. I mean, not prostitute, but trademark the. Right, I understand it, but I just love. I just love. I don't want to say I call people because people that I don't know, they're like, "Can you prostitute?" No, I'm calling you a paycheck prostitute. I'm weak because you are working. From, you, you're Hello? working every week. You're trading every, your time for what? For money. For money. Mm-hmm. Instead of them goodies, honey. They pimping you. Hello, pimping you out for quarters on a dollar. Which I was talking to one of my really good friends. I was like, "Yo, I really used to think I was doing something for fifteen dollars and fifty cents an hour." I thought I was doing something because so, I was hour. a server, right? Mm-hmm. Making thirty to forty dollars an hour as a server. And I'm thinking like, man, we making bread. Four, but I ain't five, listen, th- you see you what I'm tell saying? Me that like, when I got promoted, man, when what? you talk about making that cash, at listen, four, fifteen dollars and fifty. You making cent? you making forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, and you think that's a lot of money? No, but no wait lie. till you hit them big dollars, though. Hello, when I cleared a hundred thousand dollars in six months, I I had a I had a little come to Jesus moment where I was thinking back. On how hard I used to work for Verizon, how hard I worked for Uncle Sam, and it was stressful. First, first of all, working in retail alone, ass, yeah. zero out of ten. I don't recommend it. I worked it. at J.C. Penney, so I already know the struggle. So you already understand, mm-hmm. like, and then having a kid, and then turning around having another kid, still trying to do the same shit. This shit ain't working, like. And shout out to Verizon because they're the one that gave me the idea to start my own business. Cause I got tired of being broke as fuck. Like, mm. as fuck. I'm literally scraping 
to get by. Hey fam, it's Char Slay here. Hopefully you guys are getting a lot of knowledge and if you guys are getting value, make sure you click the like, comment, and subscribe button and definitely hit the bell to get notified because I wanna make sure I drop exclusive updates every single day. And if you guys have any questions, definitely put them in the comments below and hashtag Hey Slayer and I'll most definitely get to them when I can. If you wanna join my exclusive community where you get updates before anybody else does, quotes and etc definitely text the word socials to 201-490-3822 family i want to see you win peace out so you have children you're wanting to be you're you're at this point you're wanting to be an entrepreneur you're working to become an entrepreneur right. or or what they call a one entrepreneur at this point right you're not like are you because at this point you're probably on and off with with getting clients getting paid Absolutely. you're not at that stage so when you're at that one entrepreneur stage right how does that look for someone who's a mother who's taking care of the family who like are you working at this point in time for me but like are you working a job or is it just you self-employed no, like self -employed, okay 100 percent. so how does it look as a person who's a who's a mother has a family right now in the one entrepreneur stage because you know there's stages to being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. right so how does that how does that look how does that look? how did my house look no like mindset wise um so i didn't have the mindset shift until a year ago but i had a mini mindset shift when i realized i missed out on so much of my older son's life by slaving away for somebody else that when my youngest child was born i was like i don't want to do that again Mm. I want to be able to be here and be present. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of moms can relate. Not be annoyed and aggravated because I've been working all day right. and I got to come home, help you do your homework, cook dinner, make sure you get a bath. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly, exactly, it's, exactly. It's, it was frustrating. Mm. And it's just, I was like, something got to shake. It's right. got to, like, it's, I don't know how I'm going to make it shake, but I'm going to make that thing shake. And Facts. 2018 and now but on my way out listen i said i'm gonna still collect a check this is what i'm finna do i need verizon to fire me i'm not finna just quit hell no nah, absolutely not so i purposely started to be late so you can start writing me up mm. and you can fire me and then i got fired and then i'm gonna collect unemployment oh st hello strategy i did ha see i've always strategy you know what i'm saying I was made to be an entrepreneur, but that was my strategy. And I was like, I'm going to use that money um, to get where I need to be. Now, before I quit, I had pulled some money out of my 401k to go take the um, cell phone repair classes from Nicole at Cellbotics. Mm. At the time, she was in South Carolina, but now she moved her school to Atlanta. So, well, you pulled from your 401k, 401k yeah, okay, so to pay for a school. So, are we borrowing as in paying like paying back an in interest, or did we just take it out? No, I just took it out. Okay, so talk about that process of like, how so let me tell you how i finesse that too okay go ahead so i called nicole i didn't know nicole then before mm -hmm. i took the cell phone repair classes but i know verizon um they said you could use your 401k mm -hmm. to pay for school mm -hmm. now this isn't a traditional school because you know like the mentorships are in it's not school per right. se but we're learning right 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 and education i had to figure out a way to finesse how I'm going to be able to use this money. So I called the people at Fidelity and I was like, yo, what do I need to do to, you know what I'm saying, have y'all pay for a school? She's like, well, you need this, 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 and this. You know, mm -hmm. this type of paperwork that you have to turn in us and then we'll approve it. Right. Okay. So I called Nicole up at the time. She, like, like I said, I didn't, I didn't know her from Adam at that time. Mm -hmm. So I called her up and I was like, hey, my job will, you know what I'm saying? They'll use, they'll let me pay for the class with the 401k. They just need this, this, and this. Is that something you think you could do? Yeah. She mm -hmm. did it. And then it was history from there. Okay. And I took the class. This was before I quit. So I made sure I took the class before I quit. Right. Because I need to see how this thing going to go. Gonna work. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, see if right. this really what I want to do or not. So mm -hmm. took the class. Make, I was making, man, what? <sighs> On my off days when my kids was in school, I was out here fixing phones, unlocking, iCloud removal. So I did everything. So everything. what does that look like income-wise on the monthly? It wasn't enough to replace my... Verizon income, but I didn't care. I was so over Verizon. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't care. I said, this is going to work out by any means necessary. Okay. So I'm glad you said that. Like 
what does it take to become an entrepreneur? Because a lot of people are, you know, especially I know on my podcast are probably still working. So what does it take to become an entrepreneur in, in 2022 now? You really got to be like, I don't want to say you have to go all in. I'll say you do, and in, in your mind, you definitely need to go all in. But be very strategic. Like, I was strategic on my way out. Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, I had them fire me so I could still collect the check. Right. Because, I mean, yeah, being an entrepreneur is cool. Want to work for yourself is cool. But we got to put the grind in. We got to have some money coming in. I got kids. They got daycare. They got school. They got mm-hmm. groceries. And sh- you know what I'm saying? So, I was real strategic. You, you do have to, because I wasn't there. I wasn't all in mentally yet. Right. I hadn't made that switch again until, like I said, about a year ago. and But I knew I wanted to do something different. I was tired of doing the same thing. I knew that 100%. Right, right, right. So I would definitely say be strategic in your way out. Be strategic in the way that you move. Let your 9 to 5. Don't, your 9 to 5 is a side hustle. Your business is your job. Right, exactly. That's and that's what my brother says all the time. He's like, "Yeah, I'm heading to the side hustle. I'm I'm heading here, you know." He and and that's how I was, when I was working the job, I was viewing it as a side hustle. I, really, I was just working there to kill time. Mm-hmm. Like, um, because you wanted to just get out. The I house. just wanted to get out the house. Right. You know, we we've been quarantined for so long, and then you know, most of my job is between nine a.m. And it ends between two p.m. So from so from two p.m. for the rest of the day, I'm Be free. I'm yeah, I'm doing nothing. Can't really travel like we really want to, right? Here and there, maybe once a month here and there. But like that's once out of thirty days, right? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? What right. are you gonna do out of thirty days of your time? Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? Like you can't really be out the way you need to. Like like you said, when you're doing your routes, you're probably doing routes when you need to do routes, which is what once, once a, month? a month. Yeah, if you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Like, event space is automated. Like, yeah. you're not doing much. No, I work two days a week. For the people that are on the podcast that probably have a job, what advice do you have to them, have for them in regards to becoming an entrepreneur? If you're trying to transition to being a full-time entrepreneur? Let's start or while you're at work child. and then transitioning. Get everything you can get out of them people, then dip. And I mean, squeeze everything, all the knowledge, watch how they automate, watch how they run their systems, watch how they do their management, watch how they onboard, you know, Mm -hmm. everything, learn everything. So that should be your school, per se, and how to run a big business, Mm -hmm. because I look at myself as an Amazon, as a Walmart, as a Target, because that's where I aspire to be in all of my businesses. So. Why would I not mimic the things that they're doing? Why would I not? That's why I don't bend the rules. It's not because, you know, some people might think I'm a selfish asshole. <laughs> it's not that. It's just that there are policies and procedures in place for a reason to, one, help keep me on track, help keep my team on track. Mm-hmm. Things have, there's a certain order to things. So learn all you can learn from all these people and then transition. Listen, use what you got to get what you want. Shout out to Players Club players club mm-hmm. facts so what what do they need to let's say let's say all right I, i'm having i have some i have some you know some some money saved up okay i got about let's say between two to five grand saved up keep your cash that's dumb work okay. on your credit okay so work on your, so let's talk about that okay. credit is important absolutely so how important is credit Super when it comes important. to life and business 100 percent important so why is that because Again, me learning. If I had, if I had the knowledge I got right now, if we had credit a year ago, I'd be. I'd have been I swear to God, if I I'd had have been the a knowledge, millionaire. facts, I'd have been a millionaire. It'd be, it'd be, it would be absolutely insane if I had the same knowledge. In 2020, if we, had, if I was just we saying, had time, yo, to what? just like we were nah, just literally sitting there for a year. I'd have been a millionaire. Like, I'd have been a millionaire. I, we were making bread, like. Yeah. If, well, some of it, I was, I was chilling. You were chilling in 2020? No, like, you said you had the event space, right? That didn't come to the end of the year. Oh, uh, so the first six months was... Child stress. <laughs> stress the fuck out. Who finna pay these bills? So wait, so, okay, so first six months, you're stressed out. What made you make the decision to get in the event space? Something gotta change. And I said, bro, something gotta change, because this shit ain't, because COVID is, is killing me. 
Because mm. I can't, one, I can go out and I can still do, you know, my repair thing for my car. But then I'm thinking, because we didn't know what the fuck COVID was. Nah. I'm thinking like, damn, what if I bring this shit back to my kids? What if I bring this back to my mama? Hell, I don't want to die. Lord, I still got stuff to do. Right. You know so, what I'm saying? So things had to change. You had to get, you had, you know, mentally had to shift out of the mindset you were in to yes. get to where you are in now. I was going through a really dark time before the event space so mm -hmm. it was life-changing for me at that moment where i just really 100 percent was like i can let this situation make me or i can let this situation break me okay so how did you just happen to see neo no so i had been following neo for two years prior to really? any of this yeah wow but I originally was going to go half seas with a uh, ex best friend. But then looking back in hindsight, now I'm glad that didn't work out. Ex best friend. Ex best friend. Long story. They're now an ex best oh, friend. Oh, oh, oh. They were my best oh. friend, but now they're my ex best friend. Th that best friend. Understood. So you were going to go in business with that best friend, but mm -hmm. you were like, you're going to go in with Neo. Well, no. I was, I'm was. i talking about like the whole shebang, the mentorship. But then okay. they, they flaked. So nothing ever came of it. And then COVID hit. And then, you know, everybody else was getting bread left and right for having a small business. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting no unemployment. They didn't give me nothing. So I was stressed. Wait, for out real? Of my, yes. For what? I was stressed. They it was oh, so it was just one, you were one of those like, people that just didn't, just get, didn't it? get it oh okay and then like i had been applying and applying and applying and trying to call and try and call and email these folks was hell yeah they they take it took like three to six months just for them to call you and back. So, if they did right. so then i got resourceful i started getting on and and i'm an i'm a firm believer in using what you got to get mm. what you want you don't mm. need a lot to get where you're trying to go i didn't right. have anything so i knew i needed that money right listen i need that money <laughs> so i went and i started looking up facebook groups where georgia department of labor like how are people getting any money so then i found a facebook group dedicated to unemployment for um entrepreneur what was it like the, you know what i'm saying like the federal right something, right something, something right right and then they told me what to do and i did it it still took forever but i remember the day i had all but given up hope child about everything in life in general and then i get a notification on my phone i'm laying in my bed looking at the ceiling like oh fuck I get a notification on my phone, and then I see it's an email. I was like, damn, it's probably another bill, dude, that I can't fucking pay. But I said, self, go ahead and open it. I opened that email up. Baby, it was from Georgia Department of Labor. They probably sent you everything. You Baby, missed. one lump sum, <laughs> honey. One lump uh, Yes, Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that check was probably Listen, thick. It was fourteen five eighty eight. Mm. Now, mind you. I was like hella behind on the, but then I was like, they ain't evicted nobody, so that's why I wasn't paying rent. So I had to pay back all my bills, all of my bills, all my car. It was just so much shit going on in 2020 for me. It like was a it lot. was terrible. It was it was bad for everyone. For Bro, that shit was horrible. So I paid up all my bills, and then I ended up having like six k left. And I was stressed, but I was not stressed. So I remember because you had the bills that you you were good on the bills, yeah, but then but you were like, "What next?" Still, yeah, that's literally what I said. Mm -hmm. I was like, "What's next?" So I'm like, "Damn, all right." So I prayed over my money. I said, "Lord, I just want this money to make money." And it was like a week or so later. I'm scrolling on Instagram again, and then now remember, I had already thought about doing event spaces two years ago, but then it right. flaked, and it just. You know how you forget something, then it come back around, but it came back around again. Like I seen Neil on the timeline, like sign up for the webinar or ads, because we know Neil's the ad king. Okay, that man, advertising sheesh. king, text messages and all, emails, what, all, all of that. It. But I saw a, um, an ad for the webinar, so I signed up for the webinar and I listened to him talk, and I'm just like, damn, this might be some shit. Mm -hmm. Damn, I might need to really try this. So I was like, and and people were like, were you scared to invest? Nah, what I got to lose? What do I have to lose? I have literally nothing else left to lose. Mm -hmm. So at the time, then it was fourteen hundred dollars. Now it's not, but it was fourteen hundred then. So remember, I only got six k. Right, right. So so what is that? Forty six left. Yeah, forty six hundred left. So I paid the the fourteen. I think it was like fourteen something for the course. Mm -hmm. 
and got in the Facebook group. And, you know, I was just sitting back looking through the Facebook group. And I remember when I first got the course, I took my time with it. Like, I, I wasn't really serious on it. Then, you know, I'm like, damn, that money getting a little low. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you got to make some shake. So then I started getting in the Facebook group, paying attention, seeing, like, all the things, everybody getting their spaces. So I told myself, you're going to sit your ass down and you're going to finish this course. Facts. So I sat down and I only I finished it in a day. And then, like, the day after, I said, okay, bet. I'm going to drive and I'm going to go look for spaces. Like, because I got to make this money do something. Right. Like, exactly. it, 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 I don't have anything else. Hey fam, it's Char Slay here. Hopefully you guys are getting a lot of knowledge and if you guys are getting value, make sure you click the like, comment, and subscribe button and definitely hit the bell to get notified because I wanna make sure I drop exclusive updates every single day. And if you guys have any questions, definitely put them in the comments below and hashtag Hey Slayer and I'll most definitely get to them when I can. If you wanna join my exclusive community where you get updates before anybody else does, quotes and etc definitely text the word socials to 201-490-3822 family i want to see you win peace out right so i drove around it took me two days to find my space really yes maybe i need to do some driving yes i was that dedicated and i was caught like blowing people like i was dedicated so it took me two days to find my space i found my space but the thing is like you know when unemployment they sent the money on that little prepaid card or whatever mm -hmm. you couldn't pull no money out that prepaid card unless it was through an atm you couldn't transfer you couldn't cash app you couldn't do nothing You're only so cash central i had to pay the first month and the last month you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. the lady was like you got to pay all this this and the third which that was only gonna leave me with like a thousand dollars all right so we talking we talking a thousand dollars left right after spending the first and last month and spending the program 1400 yes. for the program so 6k was all i had i had a thousand dollars left i had to still pay for utilities i had to prep for a grand opening i had to paint i had to get my speakers i was like how the f am i gonna do this and i was like did I just waste money? Am I tripping? When I signed the lease, I had a, a panic attack. I remember the day. I, I looked happy too. in the picture, but I had a panic attack. I really sat in my car, and I had a panic attack. I was like, holy, f oh, my God, what did I just do? This was so stupid. I should have listened to my daddy. I shouldn't have took that money and did. It was so many different thoughts that were going through my mind. So in entrepreneurship, there is doubt. Absolutely. And in you the had part of that doubt. I did. And I was like, I, I remember the day when I told myself, so... Like I said, I still had to have utilities cut on, which, thank God, Georgia Power put that on the bill. Right. So, it gave me some time. I um, negotiated three months free on my rent, so I had a little cushion, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I had to find somebody to paint the building. The quotes I got, remember, all I had was $1,000. Right. They was like, mm, this don't fit in my budget. So... I ended up having a DIY, but then I found somebody to do it through another resource in the community that we talked about. Mm. And it was only a little bit, but then I really had to like humble myself because I had to tell dude, like, I ain't got the money to pay you. Mm. So we worked something out after that. But then like around the same time, like my grand opening was coming up. So I was shitting bricks because I had vendors coming in. I had no tables. No chairs. And like, I remember having another little breakdown in the car. I was crying and like boohooing to my mama on the phone because it's so, I was like, it's so much. I'm so overwhelmed with all of this. Right. And then shout out to my auntie. She came through, she rented the tables and chairs and stuff for me because the only tables that I had, them rectangle tables, like during COVID was like a hundred dollars a piece. Wait, and for real? Hell yeah. God, them six damn. wood tables was $100 a pop. That's, that's like kinda, 60, that's 70. But again, it's a <laughs> pandemic. Everything, every, it's a shortage on everything. And the way that I wow. paid for those, I, I fucked around and found out that uh, I was building business credit. Didn't even know I was building business credit, but I was building business credit. I didn't right. know what I was doing. So of course. I had a Home Depot card. They was like, they giving me $500. So I said, shit, let's run this whole up. And you ain't got I no I went and bought my paint. 
Um, cause dude told me he was gonna paint for a real cheap price. If I bought the paint, mm-hmm. I bought the paint and I bought whatever chairs and tables that I could with that money. Max that little five hundred dollars out quick. Quick. Okay, so you have all that you you you, you were resourceful. Very much. You were relatable and real no matter where you were at to get that specific right. event space up. How much do you think total will it take to open an event space? I did it with six thousand dollars. <laughs> Mm. start to finish and just imagine if it wasn't coming from just imagine if i had that extra 14 that i that you know what i'm saying i didn't spend on the course mm-hmm. i probably could have did a little bit more right you know what i'm saying because i had i had speakers i had you know what i'm saying like all i did was speakers and paint and my auntie was the one that rented the tables and chairs like you would have thought on my grand opening you would have never knew that i had a panic attack and i was out there for the pass out but <laughs> I like I remember my my mindset shift came when I the day the night before the grand open and I'm in there like I don't know how to wax or buff but I was in there because it's wood floors I was trying to make the floors look shiny make them look right. nice because I can't pay somebody to come in here and do all this stuff for me right so I'm on YouTube trying to look this shit up and figure it out and I remember I said to myself I was like bro you either gonna worry about this shit or you gonna make it work mm-hmm Again, has to I work having, or it has to work. Listen, and that's what I said. That is literally what I said. It has to work or it has to work. And from that point on. So it's knowing, been up. knowing all of that, all the struggle, all the, the doubt, the worry, like how much did you make that first month? My first month in the game, because again, I'm still learning and figuring right. out this marketing thing. Mm-hmm. I remember when I made my first five hundred dollars because you you've seen how big my space is, have you? Yeah, I have. Okay, huge. Yeah, five hundred dollars. I was ecstatic. Mm. I'm like, damn, five hundred dollars for something I did by myself, and I didn't have to do no work. And her event went until like May. It was February. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Booking, so, booking. And I remember I posted every single day on Instagram mm. from the venue page every day. For how long? Every day. Every day. So you still post it daily right now? Not not as much anymore, no. But like when I first started, every day, even before it was open, I was posting every day. The countdown, mm. every day till we open. This, this, and third. Pre-sale, pre-booking, pre-this, pre-that. My first month was $500. Technically, my, my first month opening was February. February 20th, the end of February. So it was only $500. 2021? Uh, or 20, yeah, tw- yeah, that'd be twenty twenty one. Yeah, so we're talking five hundred dollars twenty twenty one. What about the, like, when did you start seeing the consistency? Increase. Yeah, the the, the next the month? compound. So March, and I could pull it up. I think it was like six seven k for March. So we jumped from five hundred to to close to seven k mm-hmm. in one month. Let me see if I can pull it up for you. That's probably when you were like, oh, this is real. I was like, oh shit, no. So it was like 6K. I remember my first close to 10K month. And I was like, oh, fuck me. Fuck. Like $10,000? Like That's crazy. $10,000 of dollars. So right now, do you how, how much do you make consistently, give or take, right now? In a bad space? month for me is 10K. And what's a good month? 20. 20? I'd say that's a decent month. So we're it's making decent, yeah. we're making ten to twenty thousand mm-hmm. consistently mm-hmm. every single month. Six figures consistently yes. in a year. So and that's not including the other four or five businesses that you have on the side. No. Okay. Right. So now how are you balancing your event space and all the other businesses that you have? Like not including being about just the just the business space side. So the businesses, like I I'm one of them people where I feel like I'm like a squirrel. Like, a squirrel? yeah, because you know, squirrels, they be, you know what I'm saying? Squirrels always okay, moving like they got right. something to do or they got somewhere to be. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And they be darting. They're like little crackheads. I look mm-hmm. like squirrels are like crackheads because if you you ever just sit and watch the squirrel, like, yeah, where's just, that nigga going? Just, like, he got somewhere to be. Like, you, you just ADHD look at how he's moving. Thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I, I know I have to, everybody says, you got to mess it one thing before you move on to something else. I don't feel like that is me. I feel like I can 
multitask some things now now granted we all know if you're not giving 100 percent to one thing you're gonna lack some mm-hmm. something's gonna lack somewhere but i feel like now with the event space i'm to a point where that's good mm-hmm. now i can branch out like uh, i don't this doesn't need a hundred percent of my focus now right now i can take majority and move it over here because this is running this is up this is doing what it needs to do now consistently without me so you're so this business is automated so is this without your team at the time when it came to first no that was all me that was okay so first year when did you start hiring when was that when was the first because the first my first person technically my little brother helped me like some mm-hmm. th- for my grand opening, but n- n- the whole year it was really me. I was the one setting up, breaking down, doing events, decor, and I was doing decor too. I learned that online, like how to decorate. So you started hiring recently. Yeah, this is all recent. VAs, like, do you have yeah. in person? Yeah. So six people that are in person, two cleaners, um, two venue managers, and then two people to help them. Okay, so how how does it look when it comes to paying someone in person compared to VAs? Um, it's really no different. Um, I, I honestly I like in person just because you're here and I can de- I can I can delegate a lot more versus just behind a computer. Behind mm-hmm. a computer, I know what it is I'm getting and that's all I can get out of you. Now, granted, I'm gonna maximize everything Facts. behind that computer. The I'm going to get it all. Mm-hmm. But like in person, I can send them to do this, send them to do that, pick this up, drop this off, go. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a it's a lot. So when you're hiring someone in person, what does that interview process look like? Um, First time around, mm-hmm. it, the first guy came to me from he actually was visiting the space. He was a client's photographer. Mm. and he you know we chatted a little bit had a conversation he was like i really want to learn the business and i told him just show up show up he been there every weekend ever since and he drives from savannah that's a mean little that's a mean little drive right there yeah he's dedicated so you're so the interview process showing up you know i'm pretty sure as you got more into it you started to get more mature in your business Mm -hmm. and you started learning what it took what it takes mm-hmm. to grow a business and scale it. So let's talk about scaling real quick, right? You have multiple businesses. People are probably paying attention to this podcast and they're like, man, she has a lot of businesses. She's work doing this and she's a mom. And you're hiring. You have mm-hmm. a full team. You probably have what? Close to 20 people right now, right? Six. It's, it's just six. I'm talking about like all for, businesses. Um, Like what? 10, 15 maybe going on? Let me think. Contractors count. Ugh. Well, then, if contractors they, they, count, if then... they pay in taxes, if you if there is taxes involved, um, that is your team. Yeah, I didn't think about that one. Um, I have to get back with you. Yeah, it's probably you, yeah. It's 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 probably maybe maybe ten ten eleven ten yeah. eleven yeah. 10, well, that's 11. dope, right? You yeah. got ten eleven consistently reliable people that I know one hundred percent are going to get the job done. Yeah, eleven. 11. That's dope. So you have, you're running five to six, around five businesses, right? Give or take. You have 11 people working for you. Is this full time, part time? Mm, yeah, I guess I would consider it part time. Now, my venue managers, eventually, they're, I would like them to be full time. So is the direction think- that we're going. So you're scaling even further, mm-hmm. which is what we what we doing, right? That right. and some other stuff too. So I'm doing a couple of things for my family. Um, like I'm gonna get one where my dad is, where he's located. And where is he located? Um, well, he lives in the Philippines, but right now he's in Columbus. Well, that's a long way to go. That's like well, how many? Twenty six hours. Columbus, Georgia. No, Phil- oh Philippines. No. Columbus, Georgia. Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> okay, yes, I know. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, twenty-six yes. hour walk, right? I know. Who do you know that has an international event space? That is wait. So he has an. Oh, so we talking mm-hmm. over there? Mm-hmm. Okay, so one that'll give me an excuse to to, to, to go see my peoples in the, in Philippines. the Philippines. Absolutely, for sure. And, and my then, team out there. So that's another thing that my dad's working on because he already has an entire staff. 
Define like, a staff. Huge. Hundreds? Huge. I'm not gonna put my daddy business out there because so, he ain't gonna come and knock me in my head. So so he he in this game for real right now. Absolutely. So that's dope. My dad's starting, um, we're both starting together. A virtual assistant business. Like I said, the credit repair, the business credit for me, like it's so much stuff that we're doing. He also wants to do Airbnbs. That's dope. To, like Bishop wanna do it all. That's I dope. feel like he's reliving his glory days through me. I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I gotta meet your. I gotta meet your father for real. Oh, Dwayne is cool. Dwayne snaps. Pass the lap. I gotta, Bishop, I gotta see Bishop like, Lap. My, mm-hmm. my Dwayne and your Dwayne right. might get along very well. And they will. They will. They absolutely. They might will. have a 100%. whole conversation on their own time for no, real. No, they will. Like that. They. My stepdad might as well be a pastor. How often he does it for like just talking scriptures and. But that's good. Oh yeah, Dwayne quotes him, totes him. Listen, yeah, carries him, holds him. You feel he me? He ain't playing he no games. He can shoot him out from the hip. I'm weak all not, the time. Not the hip. He can shoot them things out from the hip. He can. Not the hip. And he teaches me everything that I know spiritually. He is also my spiritual advisor, my spiritual nice. mentor. We always we always need them too. Mm-hmm. Like let's talk like, before we close. Let's talk about like. Let's really deep down on the mentorship right quick, right? So do you think that you need a coach in every field? I a think life I coach, need yes. a finance coach. Yes. Hell yeah. Speaking of finances, man, listen, we made two hundred fifty thousand dollars, but we spent some money. I know. And taxes probably coming in thick. Oh my God, I'm scared of all taxes. Jesus. Aren't we all? No, I don't think we all are. I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified about I don't, taxes. I don't particularly care for taxes, but I know it's important. If you know a good CPA, right, please. I a, oh, I know it's a good CPA. Send them my way. Oh, I, I know a good one. Please I know. send it here or she I don't, my way. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't think anyone likes paying taxes, but I know a good one who can really, you know what I mean, get you right, though. Please, for the love of God, get me right. Because I already <laughs> know they finna knock my socks loose with these taxes. You Look, hear me? you need, because he gonna tell you, I'm talking tax strategist, not no regular CPA. I need somebody to do everything. I, I don't want to worry about it. I'm talking 365 days. That's what I need. I need somebody to do it for me because I don't want to do it. Okay, let, let's get it. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll refer you. I got his number in my phone. Okay. So let's 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 add, let's close it out. How can how can they find Tanisha Lett? First of all, don't be saying my government like that. <laughs> don't be saying my government. You're lucky. Here. I don't know your middle name. Tanisha is my middle name, so jokes on you. Oh. Hmm. Anywho, well, your other names. Good for you that you don't. It's fine. Let me hide my ID because <laughs> you're not gonna do this. So the quickest way to find me, don't send me no, don't send me no friend request on Facebook because I'm not gonna accept it. Everybody named Mama know Facebook is for friends, family, and close people only. I'm weak. But you can definitely follow me on Instagram, Nisha Too Cool, N E S H A, the number two, K, double O L. Absolutely. Again, don't send me no friend request just because he done told y'all my name on Facebook because I'm, I'm going to look at it and it's going <laughs> to sit there. Because Facebook is really personal. Do you get like OD amount of friend requests on Facebook? I get, oh, I get hundreds. It's unnecessary. Wait, do you, you be getting like the, it be, it be, you be getting holes in your DMs. Don't I, you? No, I don't know. what I don't go on my DMs. I'd be afraid to go on my DMs. Why? Do you not know how many DMs there are? Yes. Do I need to show you? <laughs> Yes, I get tons of DMs. Yeah, you be ignoring my shit too. There were too many. You know, my stuff automated. I don't care. <laughs> and what I tell you, take me, take me off. I can't. Don't care. You know, I think I can. You can. It. Or what is it? I think it's called whitelist, right? Yeah, I can't you can. Whitelist yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I can. I know you can. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. You should. Oh, now they got it where you can do Instagram lives on on my little Nami. So anytime somebody put a comment in there, they get a DM. Hmm. I don't DM anybody. But I, I don't do DM anybody DMs. either. That's I do get a lot of DMs. I get OD. But Facebook some are is too wanted. much. Some are wanted. Some are definitely not wanted. I'm um, weak. Okay, so they can follow you on Instagram. Absolutely. Where else? Where? Where is that the only place? It's the only place I want to give out. Oh. oh. Yes. Oh, so you bougie. Absolutely. All it's right. It's the only place I want to give out. You're not getting my Twitter. <laughs> Absolutely not. Ah. Absolutely Are we not. talking explicit content on no, Twitter? No, first of all, my daddy's a pastor. I would never, but ain't nobody getting on my Twitter. Twitter's except for the, the people that's news. New? Twitter been around. I'm, I'm talking about news. No, Twitter been around. Y'all sleep. What? I be getting all the news on Twitter. No, I get everything from Twitter. All the laughs come first. They come through Twitter. Then they trickle down to Instagram. Then they get them at Facebook. Okay? What about TikTok? Now, t- oh, 
you can definitely follow me on TikTok. I was about as to well. say, I come on now. I have TikTok. My TikTok is no degree niche. No degree niche. No degree niche because I'm out here with N E S H A. Oh no. N I S H. No degree. Oh, I'm gonna let you tell it. Mm hmm. And the only reason that one came from because somebody had made a comment to me and he was like, "Damn, you gonna been in school like how many times?" I was like, "I'm on my Kanye West shit. I'm really on my Kanye shit. Like college dropout. Mm. I'm a professional college dropout. Mm. Mm-hmm. Professional. And you were in the military. I was. Wow. You're just a Same. you're just a book of stories. Listen, <laughs> I'm really a Tyler Perry movie. No. I'm a I'm Lifetime movie. Tyler Perry movie. I'm really like a mix of a Tyler oh, Perry and movie. Lifetime movie. Um, a little bit of HBO thrown in there. You feel me? HBO. No, when I write this book. It's fine. What you want here? We got okay. one. When I write this book, it's really going gonna, gonna to be a series. Just watch. Okay. All right. Look. I, let, them, let them tell it. No, okay. It's tell always it. best when somebody else say it. Hell no, nah, because they ain't going to tell it right. I got to tell what had happened to us. <laughs> Okay, I'm weak. I well, got to tell it. Well, all right then. Look, we got, I'm, I appreciate you for being on this podcast. You didn't tell me a lot though. Really? And yeah, you did a lot of stuff I didn't know. In an hour? And in, in an hour? Has it been an hour? I thought it was more than an hour. Probably. Probably more than that. It don't matter. But you taught me a lot, especially oh, about the vending machine. I thought I was pretty knowledgeable about the vending machine space. Mm. But we gonna get we we just paid for a whole program and everything on the vending machine space. Honestly. Really? Yeah. What program? But I want the gumball machines. Yeah, that's easy. I want the gumball that's machines. Easy. You gonna put me on? It's easy. I promise. I like it's it's. It's a lot. I say it's easy, but it, yeah. They yeah. always say it's deep more than what it is. Right. It's simple. It's easy because it's somebody, I'm doing it. But coming from there, it's not. It's right, 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 right. Right. All right. So, bet, yeah, let's, let's, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna talk about it. All right, you guys, we gonna close it out. We appreciate you. Like I said, we are on the new and improved Digital Empire podcast. Your host, Chart Slayer. We in the game. We appreciate you, Tanisha Lett, for actually Thank you gracing so us with your presence. I appreciate you for right. having me. Thank you so much. One hundred percent. And like I like I always say, you guys go ahead and teach someone something new. Refer us. Go into reviews. Tell me which. Tell me what you think about the podcast. Like, subscribe, all that good jazz. We're gonna go ahead and see y'all in the next video, next podcast, and all. Peace out. Peace.